Thank you, Cheryl Pounder, Jeff O'Neill, Bob McKenzie. Ah, New Year's Eve, when Canadians from coast to coast put on their party hats and get together and celebrate. How, it, look, this wasn't the prettiest game ever overall, but it was another beautiful performance by Celebrini. How has a 17-year-old become the offensive leader of this team? Well, Bobby Mack said it best. He called him the stabilizer, and that's exactly what he was. When, when his team was down, he found a way to play his game, and when he plays his game, he is absolutely lethal. They're down a goal, but he finds a way. That speed, that dynamic left-right combination just pushes everyone back with that quick release. I mean, his entries are unbelievable. He can dangle. He draws the penalty to be able to get this power play goal. I mean, he did everything in this game. He had eight shots on goal elevated minutes over 19 is most of the term but how about this one I mean that's as dead angle of a shot as you can get but he puts it in so here's a kid I mean asking a 17 year old to stabilize your team he does it he embraced the pressure I'm excited to see him in the corner final the action. whole team deserves some props for their patience today it looked like it might get out of hand or it mm -hmm. might not go their way they were dominating play and they just couldn't score that goal the score ultimately ended up what we thought it was going to be, but there was a time where it was tight there. So good props on the patience there for Canada. Well, there was a time of concern early. Alan Latang said the first five minutes would be crucial for his team. 11 seconds in, he gets a five-minute major and game misconduct to Connor Geeky, who gets penalized for being taller than the other guy in many ways, right? Yeah, yeah this is what happens when a six foot four runaway train runs over a five foot eleven defenseman. The physics, the geometry, call it whatever you want. Big man hits a small man and, well, there's head contact. But here's the thing. Everybody in Canada loves this hit, or most people in Canada love this hit. But in international hockey, it's a penalty every day of the week because any hit to the head is an illegal hit to the head in the double IHF. It's precisely the opposite mentality, psychology, rules that we see in professional hockey. So people normally see a big hit like that in the NHL and they say, that is fantastic, great job. And it is, but in junior hockey, it's certainly in the double IHF junior hockey, it's a penalty every single time. I don't like it for him moving forward yeah. because is he going to look at the defender saying, oh, that guy's too small, I can't hit him. Mm -hmm. He's got to play loose and play aggressive. The fact that it was 11 seconds in, you would think there wouldn't be supplemental. He missed an entire game already for a hit like you that, would, but you never you, know you in the double think, IHF. But you, you never, ever know for sure. Right. Matisse Russo is 3-1 and one now for Canada. He's been their best player in other games, and he wins another one here, but... Is there something about the goals being scored that might be of concern as we head towards the playoffs? I got a feeling in the quarterfinal game there might be some traffic in front of Canada's <laughs> goaltender because smaller goaltenders, they have a difficult finding that shot and looking through screens, and you saw it tonight with Russo. The shots from the point, the shots from the sidewall, you're going to look at him here. He's trying to get that vision, 14 parked right in front of him, and as soon as he goes down and takes that look, he gets down really low on the whole top of the net. So either don't take these penalties or start chopping in front of the net, and then you're going to be ultimately back in the box again. Same thing here. He's looking to the left. The puck goes far side. And it happened a third time. You just see him battling right here. So the opposition's going to say, whatever you do, five on five, five on four, get your, take away the eyes of the goaltender. Every coach says that anyway, but they're really going to do it in this case. I know the game has changed, and you can't cross-check somebody into oblivion in front of the net anymore. But, I mean... Right now, everybody wants to just front guys, so sometimes you end up creating a double screen by standing in front of the opposing player who's standing in front of your goaltender, but I still wonder if there's not some way that you can come in and at least physically give that guy a shove to try and give the goaltender a better shot at seeing it. And today's game is so difficult because there's a bumper there as well, and that backside defenseman is constantly aware of that bump position as well. So when you're fronting, you're also trying to take away the bump at the same time. So it's going to be interesting to see if Canada makes an adjustment given the fact that they gave up three power play goals. Little things, Owen Beck, Easton Cowan both score, so now every Canadian forward has a point. That little stuff matters going into the playoff round and you know the reason you want to win the group Sweden gets the easier quarterfinal against Switzerland Canada has to play Czechia a gold medal game rematch Czechia beat Canada in group play last year they took the U.S. in group play this year to a shootout so won't be easy one day off and then the quarterfinals take place in Gothenburg